What's up everyone? As you have so astutely figured out, we are talking about how to move like you would in Gorilla Tag. Gorilla Tag, if you're not aware, is a super fun VR game that was released on App Lab and is now on Steam. It's a, you know, exactly what it sounds. You are a gorilla and you're playing tag in a multiplayer environment and you move around by grabbing limbs of trees and throwing yourself up and bouncing off walls and whatnot. It's a very fun physics-based kind of movement. When I was building the test project today, I actually hung out inside of my little arena that I made for like a solid 20 minutes just bouncing off walls and stuff. It's so much fun. So today, I'm gonna show you how to do it. First, we're gonna open up a VR project. If you'll notice, Unity Hub actually got an update. We're in 3.0 now, and a few things have changed. There is a dark mode now, which is super cool. They've also change the names of some of the buttons and how you start a new project so you'll notice over here open this used to be add now it is open and you can add from a project from your computer or a remote project now and then there's also a new project button now so we can click on that and it's gonna bring us through this little portal but make sure you're selecting the correct version up here at the top so we're gonna be using 2021.2.7 which is the newest released version and I'm gonna go down and actually select the 3d URP so without the sample scene, we now have the option to start a VR project without the sample scene in URP, which is the render pipeline I recommend you use for any VR project. At this point, we're gonna set up XR. I've already done a full length video about how to set all this up and why you do certain settings and why not. This is just gonna be a really quick overview of like a refresher if you already know how to do it. If you want a more in-depth video, then just check out the one in the uh, top corner. If you already know how to do it, skip to um, this timestamp. Also, there's chapters down below and that's where I actually start to do uh, this specific tutorial. All right, for XR, we are going to go to edit project settings, go down to XR plugin management and install XR plugin management. I'm only gonna do this project for PC, so we're only gonna be on this PC tab here. I'm gonna click on open XR to install that. It's gonna ask if you would like to restart your project and swap it over to the new input mode. So just hit yes, it'll restart Unity. Then we're gonna go to open XR and then I want to add a couple of interaction profiles. I'm gonna do Oculus Touch and Valve Index for this particular one. And then I'm gonna swap the render mode over to multi-pass. Now we can go to the package manager, so window package manager, and then click on this plus icon and add package from git URL. And we're just gonna type in com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit. Hit add, and that's gonna install the XR Interaction Toolkit package. There'll be a pop-up that says there was a major change and will break any um, older versions of this toolkit that you have used. Since this is a new project, we can just say go ahead. And then we also want to install the sample. So click on the sample drop down and import the default input actions sample. And then now we have a samples XR interaction toolkit folder and then whatever version we downloaded and then just drill all the way down to the bottom of those folders. And then I'm going to add each of these presets. It should be five total, snap turning, continuous turning, left and right hands. And then one more setting we need to fix is going to edit project settings. And then in the preset manager, these are all the presets that we just added. I'm gonna specify right and left where the uh, left and right hand controllers are. And now I can right click in the hierarchy, go to XR and XR origin action based. Now I'll add to my project and it also adds an XR interaction manager that we need to add an input action manager to. And then we're gonna click on the action assets and add in the XRI default input actions asset. Let's go into the XR origin and the left and right hands just to make sure we set up the references correctly. And yes, those are correct. So there we go, we have a XR scene set up. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna use two different formulas. One of them is a PID controller, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, which essentially is very fancy terms for we apply physics to the rigid body in order to get it to go to a specific point. So how quickly can it get there without kind of doing the rubber banding thing where it tries to hit that point but then overshoots it and tries to come back to it again. PID, all PID does is make it kind of do a smooth, like goes really fast if it's far away, but as it gets closer, it slows down until it gets to the exact right point that you want it. We're gonna use this formula to track your controller with a physics hand. Where you move your controller, the physics hand will go, but if it collides with something, it's not 
going to go through that object. Feel free to browse the wiki page for this. There are some complex formulas that I don't really understand. I'm just going to copy and paste some code and you can copy and paste it as well. The second formula we're going to use is Hooke's Law, which is basically the formula for springs. And we're going to use springs to, we're basically going to attach a spring, an invisible spring to our um, physics hands. And that will allow us to push off of the ground and kind of press up against walls or do the, the pinch climbing and whatnot. So we're going to use friction and Hooke's Law's springs to allow us to move ourselves. This formula is a little less complex, but feel free to check it out. So first things first, let's make a ground and have some physics hands and be able to, you know, touch things, but not have our hands go through the ground, that kind of thing. So I'm going to first just turn off the skybox so things are a little easier to see. And then we're going to add a ground layer. So 3D object plane, this will be called the ground. And then let's create a material and this will be the ground mat. And we'll make that a grayish color as well. Drop that onto the, all right, let's add in some hands. So I'm going to right click, create an empty game object. Yeah, we'll call it the physics XR rig. And under this, we're going to add first, I'm going to make sure all of these are set to the center of the map. Perfect. And then on the physics XR rig underneath that, we're going to create a 3d object cube. And this is going to be hand left and scale this down really small to something like 0.01 to 0.1 and 0.1. Bring it up above the ground. So we're not, you know, immediately clipping. We're also going to want to add a rigid body onto this. And we want to increase the mass a little bit because that'll allow us to throw ourselves a little better. And then we also want to change interpolation to interpolate and collision detection to continuous dynamic because this is going to be moving quite fast and calculating a lot of, a lot of physics. So we're going to create a scripts folder. Also, I'm going to create a materials folder to add this ground material into. And then inside of the scripts folder, I'm going to right click, create a C sharp script, and this is going to be physics hand. And we could add that script to our left hand after Unity re-renders everything. So just drag and drop the script onto the hand. And then I'm going to click on the hand in the hierarchy, press Control D to duplicate it, and rename this one to hand right. There we go. Now we have both our physics hands. So one more thing we need to do before we jump into the code, and that's prevent the hands from interacting with each other and prevent them from interacting with the player as well. So I'm going to hold down Control and click on the other hand. Now I have both selected. Click down, click on layers, add a layer. And on layer eight, I'm going to add a player layer layer. I don't know why I always add it to layer eight, but usually it's just layer eight. Grab both of the hands again and then set the layer to player. And then on the XR origin, we're going to add a capsule collider to the camera. And the capsule collider's radius is going to be something smaller like 0.25. And then the height can also be a little bit smaller too. So um, 0.7 maybe. Something that's tall enough that like picks you up off the ground, but short enough that you can actually you know reach down to the ground. And then I'm going to grab the whole XR origin and bring it up until the capsule collider is above the ground. That way we don't just clip through and drop through the bottom. And then we're gonna grab the main camera again where the capsule collider is, set the layer to player, and then we're gonna back out to the XR origin and add the rigid body here. Because any forces we wanna add to our XR rig, we want to add it to the entire XR rig, not just the head. So we're gonna put our rigid body all the way out on the parent object. And same thing for this rigid body, we're gonna make it interpolate, be interpolate and collision detection be continuous dynamic. Also, we need to freeze the rotation of this one or else you'll just fall right over when you start the project. All right, this should be set up for our hierarchy and whatnot. Now we just need to add the PID formula to our physics hands to have it track our controllers. So I'm gonna double click on physics hands, open that up. And the code editor I'm using is called Writer. It's from JetBrains. I highly recommend using this for Unity or all of your projects. It's a really, really nice IDE. So highly recommend it's free for students and also I think there's a one to three month free trial too. So I'm going to clean the script up a little bit before we start. Delete these two using statements we're not going to use. Delete the comments and then we're going to change the update method to fixed update because we're going to be using a lot of physics stuff. Now I'm not going to pretend to understand how PID works, the formula or the interworkings or anything, but I do know we need access to a couple variables for PID and we also need access to the hands rigid body and we also need access to the players rigid 
rigid body. So I'm going to create a private rigid body variable called rigid body for the physics hands rigid body. Serialized field rigid body player rigid body. And I'm going to create a header and call this PID so we can see it a little better in the inspector. And then when we start, we need access to that rigid body that we just declared. So rigid body is going to be equal to get component rigid body. And we're actually going to adjust the max angular velocity on the rigid body to be infinity. So basically whatever it caps out as when you're turning your hand really fast, if you find it being slow, like I think on my last physics hand video, I forgot to do this. And so no matter how much you jacked up the speed, you, if you turn your hand, it's going to be capped at a certain amount because the rigid body's max angular velocity is set to a pretty low amount. So we're just going to say rigid body dot max angular velocity is going to be equal to float dot positive infinity. And that will allow us to turn our hand as fast as we want and it should be able to catch up. And then in our fixed update, we want to do a few things. So we're going to do a PID movement. So this will be just X, Y, and Z values. And then we're going to do a PID rotation. So let's make both of these methods void PID movement and void PID rotation. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this. So ready for it? Paste. This is the formula we're using. You can uh, look at it. So this is how it is set up in code in Unity converted over from the wiki formulas. So I'm not even going to try to explain it. I just know there's a frequency, a dampening value, and then we need to set up a target that we're trying to follow as well. So go back up to the top here. I'm going to grab a serialized field float frequency, and I'm going to set this equal to 50. And then we're going to do another serialized field float damping. I'm going to set this one equal to one. And then we need a target, so a serialized field transform target, and that'll be our controller. So there you go. And basically this whole formula spits out a force that we can use to say, okay, for this particular frame, how much force are we applying to our physics hand in order to get to the transform position of our controller. And we can use that force on our rigid body. So rigid body add force, force, and we're gonna make that a acceleration force. So now every frame we are calculating how fast do we need to move to that target for this particular frame in order to get there, but kind of smooth off and not have any of that rope banding. Now we're gonna do a very similar equation to the rotation, and I'm just gonna copy paste this one too. This one's gonna be using a rotation frequency and a rotation dampening value. So I'm gonna go back up to the top, add both of these in. So serialized field float uh, rot frequency. And I'm gonna set this one equal to 100, a little more, change that to float. And then another serialized field float rot damping. And this one's gonna be equal to a little less, so 0 0.9. So the damping is effectively how quickly it's going to go to your hand. Over damped, that means it's going to go slowly, but be more precise and have less rubber banding. If it's under damped, that means it's going to go past your hand and kind of come back and have a little bit rubber banding, but it's going to get there a lot faster. So it's kind of a give and take. Um, so you can feel free to play around with these values to get what feels right for your game. So the PID rotation spits out a torque instead of a force like the movement did and effectively just use a, use a little bit of Quaternion math in here. And we can use that torque to add to our rigid body just like we did above. So add torque this time, torque, and also a acceleration force mode. Make sure you save the project and we can jump back into Unity and see if it works. We're gonna fill in those values, test things out. So let's grab the left hand. All the values are already set up nicely and then just drag and drop the XR origin into the player rigid body and the target is gonna be our left hand controller. And then right hand is gonna be XR origin for the rigid body and the right hand controller for our target. Save that. And then I'm also going to turn the lasers off or the left and right hand controllers just because we're not gonna need them. So just uncheck the line renderer and XR interaction line visual. Save that, make sure your Oculus is in link mode and we're gonna hit play or whatever device you're using. Oh, and there's one thing I missed. So when we added that physics layer, we didn't actually update the physics and settings. So I'm gonna go to edit project settings, go over to physics and then scroll all the way down to get to the matrix. And we're gonna uncheck where player collides with player just so we can't interact with ourselves and we can't interact with our hands. And now when we hit play, you'll see we have two hands that we can move around and they track very well with our controllers. And then if I try to go through the ground, they do not, and they kind of fall down correctly as well. So everything is matching up nicely. And if I add in like a little cube, so we're gonna add a 3D object cube, reset the transform, and then I'm gonna shrink it down to something quite small and add a rigid body to it, and then move it a little bit out of the way just so we don't hit it right off the bat. Hit play, you'll see we can grab the cube and pick it up and move it around with just physics. So I'm not pressing a grab button or anything, It's 
all physics. Like we can pick the cube up, I can put it on my other hand, kind of juggle it back and forth. And so this is all physics. So picking it up, we were using friction to kind of, you know, move the cube around. And what we're going to attempt to do next is to actually do that to our player, except pushing on kinematic objects that don't actually move. And you could imagine how this would work for physicalized hands too. You could replace the little flat squares that we have with hands and, you know, have full physics hands. Also, I'm going to go back and add in like a yellow material to our hands just so we can see them a little bit better. So yellow to one hand and the there we go. All right, let's do the fun part. Let's do the moving around when you you know, push off the ground or grab things or whatever. To do that, we're going to add Hook's Law. So let's go back to the script. I'm going to collapse the PID rotation and movement because we're not going to need to mess with those anymore. We're going to add Hook's Law. Create a new method for that. Void Hook's Law. And this one's a little bit simpler of a formula, so I would be able to explain it a little bit. First, we're going to get the displacement. So what's the distance between the hand and your physics hand? So when you're pushing down into something, how far does that distance because you're you know your physics hand is going to stop when you push against something but your you know real life controller hand is not so we're going to grab the distance that you know the two hands are apart and use that as a spring force to kind of propel yourself so we need a displacement from resting so vector three displacement from resting and that's just equal to the difference between your transform position and the target position and we're going to convert that into a force so a vector three force is going to be equal to displacement from resting multiplied by some constant that we can adjust in the inspector. So we're going to call this a climb force and we can make the climb force up here at the top. Um, so underneath all of this stuff, I'm going to add a base and then another header. And then this header is going to say brings and we can add the serialized field float climb force. And I'm going to set this one equal to like a thousand. I was playing around with it a little earlier and this, this is what seemed to work the best. Now there's a problem with just adding this force directly to your spring is that there's nothing else acting against it from the other direction. So in springs, you have two different directions. You have the spring force, but then you have the other directional force of whatever it's pushing against. And so we need something else and what we're going to call a drag force. And if you've ever played Boneworks, you've noticed that when you're trying to climb on things, it's very wobbly and shaky. And that's because there is not as much drag. You, the player has a lot of um, control, but it also prevents you from you know, making any fast movement. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So we're going to add more drag. So we're going to introduce a formula and another formula is the last one I promise that adds more drag when we're moving slow so if our hand velocity is slower then we want more drag so that it's very precise movement but if we have very fast hand velocity so we're bouncing off walls and moving things we don't really care as much of, of the drag and the uh, preciseness I'm just trying to move fast so we can have a little bit of that rubber banding because we're not gonna be holding on to things for long we're just trying to move really fast so more drag when we're moving slow less drag when we're moving fast is the general idea that will allow us to launch ourselves faster and throw ourselves around and whatnot, which is most of the fun anyway. And so to calculate this drag, <laughs> I'm just going to create a float drag and that's going to be equal to get drag. Just send it out to a method, have it calculate all the stuff and then bring it back in. And then we can take the player rigid body. We're going to add the force. This is going to be acceleration force mode as well. And then we take the player rigid body, add force. We're going to add drag, but we're going to multiply drag by the opposite of whatever the player rigid body's velocity is. And then we're also, also going to multiply that by a climb drag force. So just like we have a climb force constant that we can adjust, we have, we'll have a climb drag force that we can also adjust. And this one's also going to be a force mode acceleration as well. So let's create this climb drag force up here at the top. So I'm just going to click next to this line and press control D to duplicate it and rename this to drag. And then I'm going to set this to about half the value. So 500. So 500 will be the max value. And then we'll We'll be able to scale that way down if we're moving fast. Oh, also I misspelled springs, S-P-R. All right, so how do we get drag? So let's make a new method and this is going to return a float. So float get drag to a vector three and velocity. And that's gonna be equal to our target dot local position minus a previous position. So this is just a position that we saved last frame and we're gonna use this frame to get the distance, which we can use to calculate velocity. And that's gonna be divided by time dot fixed delta time because we're using, we're doing all of this in the uh, fixed update. We'll create previous position in a second. 
let's finish this method out. So we're gonna have a drag float, and that's gonna be equal to one divided by our hand velocity magnitude. But we never wanna divide by zero, so just in case magnitude ends up being zero, we're just gonna add a really small number like 0 0.01. And then one more thing we need to do is clamp drag. So we never want drag to be above one, and we never want it to be below some small number like 0 0.03. We just want it to be not zero and not above one. And you could use math.clamp, but for some reason that's not working for me, so we're gonna do it the manual way. So drag is going to be equal to the expression is drag greater than one question mark. And if that is true, then drag is gonna be one. Otherwise, so semicolon, we're just gonna set it equal to drag. And then we're gonna do it for the low end. So drag is going to be equal to drag is less than 0 0.03 question mark. So is if that expression is true, then we're gonna set it equal to 0 0.03. Otherwise set it equal to whatever drag is. So this is effectively clamping it from a high end and a low end. And then we're gonna set previous position. So previous position is gonna be equal to whatever our transform position is, and we can return drag. So this line here is really doing most of the work. It's inversely scaling the velocity of your hand with how much drag we're adding. So let's add previous position. So just go back up here to the top. That can be a private field. So vector three, previous position. And then when we start, we're gonna set previous position. So previous position can be equal to the transform dot position. Also, one more thing we need to do when we start is just go ahead and set the hands. So the physics hands, just go ahead and teleport them to wherever the controllers are, just so we're not having to go through random stuff or whatever. So we're gonna say the transform dot position is gonna be equal to target position and the transform dot rotation is gonna be equal to target rotation. So just so we're starting out in the correct spot. So let's jump back into Unity and see how that looks. And you'll see we can push off the ground, which is really cool. So I can kind of push down on it and it'll throw us, but there's like this weird, like, you know, you fall slowly. And also, if you notice, I can swipe my hand to the side and it throws our player back and forth. The hook's law is also being applied to our PID controller, which is not really what we want. We, when we're like having, you know, some, a little bit of spring as hook's law would see it in our PID controller, we don't really care about that. We only really care about it when we're touching something. So we need to just have a check to see, okay, we're only gonna apply this kind of spring to if we're touching something. Otherwise it's gonna make us like have some really weird behavior. So back into the code, it's a really easy fix for this. We're just going to add a bool variable called is colliding. So bool always starts out false, which is good for us. And then we'll use on collision enter, on collision exit. So on collision enter is colliding is gonna be equal to true. And on collision exit is colliding is gonna be equal to false. And then back up in our fixed update, instead of always calculating Hooke's law, we're going to have a condition here that says, if we are colliding, then we calculate Hooke's law. Save that and jump back into Unity. And you can see I can very easily kind of bounce off of the ground now. And <laughs> this ground plane has all of a sudden become a very small area. So you'll see I am just kind of swiping back and forth on the ground and it allows me to kind of move and I can use both hands to kind of, you know, do a fast walk or whatever. And I could just throw myself off of the plane as well. Let's make this a little more interesting. Let's uh, you know, add in some trees or walls or stuff for us to bounce off of. So I'm going to go to Window Package Manager, and then we're going to swap over to Unity Registry and scroll down until we see Pro Builder and install that one. This is a really easy prototyping tool. If you've not heard of Pro Builder, I love it. It's great. It allows you to create shapes other than just your plain old cubes. And then we're gonna kind of back out of here, and then we can go to Tools, Pro Builder, and Pro Builder Window. And that'll pop this window up here we can add a new shape and I want to add in a not an arch we'll do a cube first make some walls here so drag across make a little bit of a wall over there let's do another one here kind of surround our whoops roll Z that one kind of surround our little area here with walls also let's add in a point light in here because this is um, a little little dark we set that down to the center and just bump the intensity so we can actually see inside and then let's make uh, a couple things like a uh, uh, maybe a pole, add like, a, you know, just some interesting shapes. It's like a little pole to climb up, maybe something on the wall here to stick out. We can make a little ledge thing. Um, ooh, let's make, let's do like a little wall over here that we can bounce back and forth between that wall. And then maybe just a smaller hole here and like a larger little base area to kind of bolt over. All right, let's see how that does. I'm gonna jump into it and you'll see I can jump up 
to the, it can bounce off of walls so I can pinch climb this. It's a little, little hard. So there's one thing we can do to fix this. So it's still, a, still a tad bit difficult to manage. And one thing we can do to improve that is to add a physics material. So I'm gonna go into my materials folder, right click and go down to physics material. There we go. And we'll just call this hand and we'll up the dynamic friction to something like a hundred and static friction also. And then we'll do friction combine as the maximum and then find our left and right hand physics hands, go to the box collider, drag those in, drag the material in. So it's in both of them now. And now now if we hit play, we should be really sticky to the walls and whatnot. So I can, yeah, there we go. So I can climb up and then push off and jump up to the top here and jump over here, go off of each, try not to you know, do the gorilla tag thing where you destroy your house. There we go. Aha. My, my little cheese, I just realized these look like cheese, but I can jump off of things and climb up, go around. You can even kind of go up the corners. So if you run over to the corner, you can jump up the jump off the corners. This might be a little too much um, velocity for. There we go. You can climb up the corners like that. So yeah, have fun with it. It's a cool little. Uh, I hate here my friction is so much I can kind of push against just the corner and go up. There we go. So have fun. Go crazy. This is a super fun project. It's really fun to just kind of hang out and bounce around and uh, you know, see what you can do. This uh, is probably a little more velocity, um, like climb force than you would want for like a, you know, gorilla tag replica. You could scale that down a little bit, but yeah, fine tune the uh, numbers a little bit. If you don't want to set the whole project up yourself, you can support me on Patreon and get access to all of the source code from every single one of my tutorials. And if you run into any issues, definitely join our discord. We have a really active discord and some really fun people in there so just join hang out we have a channel specifically for helping you out with any dev issues and whatnot if you are interested in having me do like a bigger tutorial and recreating the entire gorilla tag game like the multiplayer aspect lobbies how to do the tag element going over the climbing again then leave a comment down in the description so i know that you're interested and let me know if you have any suggestions for other tutorials i should do otherwise look out for the upcoming live streams on the weekends and uh, i'll see you next week